Welcome to Soul Medication, your weekly biblical encouragement, the podcast that nourishes your soul and strengthens your faith through the timeless wisdom of God's Word. I'm your host, Michelle Brooks, and I'm honored to be your guide as we delve into the transformative power of Scripture. Each week, we'll open the pages of the Bible and explore the purposes, direction, and guidance that God has for us. Together, we'll study the principles that can shape our daily lives and bring us closer to our Creator. As we embark on this journey, we'll seek the Holy Spirit's guidance and pray so that we may truly understand and apply God's truth in our lives. Whether you're a seasoned believer or just beginning your spiritual journey, Soul Medication is here to uplift and inspire you. Together, let's find solace in God's Word, find strength in His promises, and find hope in His unfailing love. Subscribe to Soul Medication on your favorite podcast platform and join our community of faith-filled individuals who are seeking biblical encouragement and spiritual growth. Let's open our hearts and minds to the transformative power of God's Word as we walk together on this journey of faith. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. So excited and blessed to be back here bringing you encouragement from God's Word during our special celebration of Holy Week here at Soul Medication. I'm your host, Michelle, and as you may have heard or noticed, we are changing it up this week, going back to daily podcasts this week as we follow Jesus through the gospel to the cross. But first, let's take time out and ask for God to bless our time together. Heavenly Father, I pray that as we look at your word today, your Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth as he brings us the things of you and your desires for us. Open our hearts and minds and give us a desire to want to do your will, even if our earthly desires are stronger. We pray for a special blessing this week as we reflect on the holiness of this week and all that it means to us as believers who have received the true sacrifice of Jesus paying the price for us on the cross. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So yesterday I gave a testimony of how abiding in Jesus is the way to life and that whatever is going on in your life, he never leaves you alone. So if you missed it, be sure to go back and listen to that one. And yesterday being Monday, John really doesn't tell us a specific account of that day. But we know from Matthew 21, Mark 11, and Luke 19 that a couple things happened most likely on Monday. First, Jesus was walking up to Jerusalem and he was hungry. He was trying to find a fig on a fig tree and being unsuccessful, he cursed the tree. This was a sign to men that he had come to the Jews first, seeking fruit, and there was none. So there's a powerful message there. And after reading the message yesterday about abiding in the vine and what the vine dresser does when the branches do not yield fruit, that should corroborate this action that he does here. Then as he arrives into Jerusalem, he basically cleans out the temple. Now, remember back in John chapter 2, during the first Passover of his ministry, he had thrown over the tables, he threw the merchants out of the temple courts because of their sinful practices and intentions. He chased the uh, sacrificial animals out of the courts. And here he finds the same thing going on again, those crafty practices, the uh, fraud that's going on. And he throws over the tables of the money changers And now the money changers were necessary because remember Jews from all over came to uh, Passover and this was when they paid their temple tax and it had to be paid in temple shekels and it left a lot of room, unfortunately, for fraud. So Jesus shows them that the temple, even the courts, is not a place to conduct this kind of business. And the religious leaders are watching the people. They're watching them respond to him and have this respect for his knowledge and his teaching. And they are seeking a way to put an end to this man who is disrupting their little world of religion as they know it. So now it is Tuesday. And as we are following through the book of John, we've already discussed how on Monday, Jesus cleaned the temple physically. Here on Tuesday, he gives it a spiritual sweep. We see the end of 
Jesus' public appearance, his public teaching. And John reiterates that the refusal of the people to believe, or if they did believe, then they were so concerned about the praise of men that they did not speak out. In Mark 11, we see the result of Jesus cursing the fig tree. And they know as they walk by it that it's all shriveled up. It's not just beginning to die, but it is truly fully withered up. And this allows Jesus to give the disciples encouragement about faith. Matthew has five chapters that seem to encompass the events of Tuesday before Calvary. And we see a number of traps the leaders have set for him, trying desperately to get something from him that will hold up in court to convict him. One of the very first things we see is the chief priests and elders came up to him as he had entered the temple to teach, and they questioned who gave him the authority or power. And he answers their question with another question. And Jesus went on to teach three different parables through the next several chapters. They try to trap him in regards to his allegiance to paying taxes to Caesar. And he eloquently answers back, pay to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And then segue right to another trap about the resurrection to which he answers in Mark 12, 24, that they truly don't know the scriptures or the power of God. And finally, a scribe who had been watching him answer these questions so well began asking him which of the commandments is the most important. And he answers that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. And the scribe said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And I thought, well, that was pretty an awkward moment, right? A scribe, one who transcribes the law of God, has no re- no authority in actually what the word says, but just rewriting it, copying it over, the scribe telling the son of God, the very author of the word, that he is not far from the kingdom of God. How little did he know what a statement that was. We are also going to see that Jesus had just encouraged the people in John 12, 35 to walk in the light. And we talked a little bit about that, I think, either this yesterday or the week before about how uh, Jesus was the light of the world. And he already told them that he is the light of the world. So let's look at it another way. Let's, let's think about it differently. Maybe you're listening. Maybe you don't know Jesus personally. Maybe you don't have the light of the world in you or leading you. So what Jesus does on this Tuesday before his crucifixion is that in verse 44, he loudly declares that those people who believe in him are not only believers in Jesus, but they are believers in the one who sent him and that those who see him See the one who sent him. He's come as a light, he says, and those who believe in him do not walk in darkness. So let's just backtrack to when we were covering John 12. Let's do this. Let's think of how many people out there are walking in the darkness. Just take a second and think. Think of the people you know that you work with, that you live with, that are around you, that you see in the news, in the media, on TV. Think of all these people walking in darkness. Now, let's think about what's so bad about walking in darkness. First of all, you can't really see where you're going, right? If you're walking in darkness, you cannot see where you're going. You are not sure where to put your feet. You're not sure what you're going to bump into. You're not sure if someone or something is standing in the darkness ready to attack. And this says nothing to the fact that if you're walking in the darkness, you cannot see the beauty that is around you. My willingness to minister to others and that don't know Jesus changes. That all changes when I change my perspective to thinking that they don't want to know Jesus to maybe, just like me, maybe 
They're tired of walking in the darkness. Maybe they would like to see where they're going. Maybe they would like to enjoy the view. What do we say to someone when we find them sitting in a room? Can I turn the light on for you? Charles Spurgeon says, we look upward and see no twinkling star. Downward and do not even find a glowworm. Surely we shall see a candle in some window. But no, we are lost in a dark wood. Have we not somewhere about us a match that we could strike? We fumble for it. We find it. It is damp. We have no light. The question that now chills the heart is how can God deliver me? We do not see how he can make a way of escape. So what kind of people are we if we get so frustrated because we are in a situation that seems completely hopeless? We feel trapped or maybe you're not familiar with the hope that comes from living a life where Jesus is your Lord and Savior. And when you find yourself in these situations, you just cannot find your way out. You have no idea or when it will end. As a believer, am I looking at the situation as hopeless and just giving up, thinking that it's hopeless for God too because there's too many oppositions or that the fight is just too evil? Do we not know that God wrote the book on the impossible? Ask Sarah, ask Elizabeth, ask Moses and the Israelites that walked across the sea on dry land. We should know that God is our deliverance, but imagine not having that hope. Imagine trying to live in our world today and feel so hopeless, so triggered by the media, by politics, and feel that our situation is just utterly hopeless. Spend this holy week calling on the God of the angel armies, the Lord of hosts. Give him your offering of praises and the sacrifice of an upright heart. And as he gives you a new song in your heart, Share that song with others, just as a blind man cried, I once was blind, but now I see. What greater way to celebrate this holy week than by sharing your light with those around you who are walking in the darkness? We need to stop thinking others don't want to hear about Jesus and begin to share Jesus as the one who brings light to their darkness. As we have seen today, Jesus knew how to answer the tough questions. He knew scripture and he used it. As we will see tomorrow, we will watch as Jesus leaves departing words to his disciples. Some we've already mentioned, but we'll take a closer look at what went on during Wednesday of the Holy Week. As you reflect about these truths this week, I pray that they will be real to you. Please continue to follow us us as we close out the book of John. We walk with Jesus daily through this holy week. I hope you'll drop me a line and share with me how this podcast has blessed your life today. And I hope you've been encouraged in your heart and in your soul that the word of God has truly been your soul medication today. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Soul Medication. I hope you found it encouraging and a spiritual lift to your soul. If you're enjoying these messages, I hope that you will hit the subscribe, hit the follow, the free, and share them with others. You can also leave us a review. Feel free to visit our website. The link is in the show notes. Follow us on social media at Soul Medication 2023 on Instagram or Soul Medication on Facebook. You can find lots of encouragement, challenges, and resources such as my new devotional, How Well Is Your Soul, available now on the website or from Amazon. Have a wonderful week and may God richly bless you.